Welcome to ServiceNow Project Management Time Card Training. I can create a new time card by going over to the navigation window and selecting Time Cards from the list. And since I haven't turned anything in yet, I'll just go down to the My Time Cards section and select Current. There are a couple of different ways we can generate our time card. We'll demonstrate both ways to do so. First, we'll simply create a new time card. Now, even though I am creating a time card, I am not creating a new task. A time card can only be created from existing tasks that I have authorization to put time against. So the first window I'm going to go over to is this task window. And I can look up using the looking glass, the task that I like. And so I'll click on that and it'll show the tasks that are currently assigned to me. Now notice as we look at the tasks that I can use, two of them here at the bottom are assigned to me specifically. The ones that are empty in the assigned to are usually tasks that are assigned to a work group that I'm a member of. So I'm able to put time against all four. Let me just close this window and show you that in the type ahead field if I have a lot of tasks and I'd like to narrow that down to some tasks that I already know the name of I can actually type in a keyword that I'm looking for and it'll show me the tasks that have the keyword that I'm looking for in them I can select one of them and now I can scroll down below this gray bar and I can put time directly in these fields against the dates on the left. So I'll go to Monday, double click and put eight hours against that day, and Tuesday another eight hours. I can enter notes at this time where I need to. Here's the Monday notes. Tuesday. I can then save this time card. I can submit this individual time card for approval. I like to group mine all together and submit them all at once, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click on Save. Now that we've saved this particular time card, I'm going to back out of it to the main time card menu. And you'll see that I now have a time card item with eight hours on Monday and eight hours on Tuesday. If I use the bottom scroll bar to move over to the edge of the screen, you'll see that it automatically totaled the hours for both that task and for the week. Now that was an example of how to generate a time card based on a task that I had access to. Now we'll go and put some annual leave in, or a non-project task. Again, we can only put time against established tasks that have already been created but for non-project tasks I'll go up here to category click on the pull down menu and select non-project time now when I go into the task window field again I can select the looking glass and look at the entire menu or I can use the type ahead feature to look for a certain type of leave I'll use the looking glass menu now just to show you all the different ones that are in there Notice that because I have the word annual up here in the task, it remembered that filter when I pulled up the looking glass list. So to make sure I'm looking at all of them, I'll just click on the word all here in the breadcrumb row. Okay, I'm just going to use regular annual leave, so I'll go ahead and click on that. Now, in the previous example, I went ahead and put my time directly in this individual time card view, but just do it a little differently. I'm going to go ahead and save this and go back out to the full time card sheet. Now that I've saved it, I'll go back to the full list by clicking on the left carrot here. Now notice I have annual leave as a, a row in this spreadsheet view. From this view, if I wanted to, let's say Wednesday I took off some annual leave, I can just double click directly in this field. Notice when I do that from this view, it automatically brings up a note field. I can just hit cancel if I don't want to put in a note. 
when we enter information from one of these spreadsheet views like this, notice as I scroll over, it didn't total either the row or for the week. If I want to retotal the week, I'll simply right click on this gray bar and refresh the list. Then I'll scroll over to the right and you'll see that it's added all those numbers together. When we edit from a spreadsheet view, this is whether it's in a project or task or timesheet, it does not automatically calculate in, until we refresh. You'll remember in the previous example when we created a task separately from the spreadsheet view, it automatically updated the spreadsheet view so that the calculations were automatically updated. Since I haven't submitted either of these time cards yet, I'm going to go ahead and delete them by selecting these rows. And down here where it says actions on selected rows, I'm going to select delete and confirm it. And I'm going to show you a different way to generate tasks. You can generate all the tasks that you have access to with the click of one button. This generate task cards button. This will automatically create rows for all of the project tasks that are directly assigned to me. It will not generate the ones that I have access to through a work group affiliation, but only those tasks that are directly assigned to me. It's asking me if I'm sure I want to do that. Yes. Now it's informing me that it's going to generate two time cards because those are the only ones directly assigned to me. Remember we also had some that were indirectly assigned to me or assigned to the work group that I'm a member of. I would have to bring those other ones in individually by clicking on new. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in a week's worth of work. I'll add one day of sick leave again. New. Select non-project time. Do that type ahead feature. And I'm going to use straight sick leave. And we'll say I was sick on Wednesday. Double click on Wednesday the 22nd. Type in the eight hours of sick. And save, not submit. Again, submission will send it directly to my supervisor for approval. I'm not ready to do that yet, so I'm just going to hit save. And then I'm going to back out to the time card list view. Now here I have eight hours on Wednesday. And again, because I created that by creating a new time card and, and coming back to this view, it's already calculated that eight hours both on that row and in the total for the week. Now I'll go ahead and put the time against these other tasks to fill out my week. And I'll put a noteworthy accomplishment on my Friday entry. Now that I've entered this time in the spreadsheet view, I'll right click up in this gray area, refresh the list, and now I have my 40 hour week ready for submission. Now that I know I have all the rows ready to go, I will go ahead and select this bottom radio button down here which selects all of the rows and then I'll use the pull down menu to submit for approval. Notice that after having submitted it for approval, the hours that I entered in the spreadsheet view are now a light blue color indicating that I cannot edit them. So I'll try and edit one now. And notice it says that security prevents writing in the field. However, if I find that I've made a mistake, I can select all of the rows again, or one of them, but in this case I'll select all of them. And I can tell them to revert back to pending. Now I can edit the text again. 
For the sake of an example, let's go ahead and submit only the sick leave line item. I'm going to submit that one for approval. And notice that only that row now has blue text so that I cannot edit it. Now I'll go over to the navigation window and select the submitted, the time cards that have been submitted. And notice that I only have one. Notice that the current view me, lists not only the time card entries that we can still edit, but also the ones that are submitted. If I wanted to know which line items were approved by my supervisor, I could just click on Approved. And if I had any, it would show me those line items that have already been approved. One more thing that I might point out is there's a Refresh List button up here that would do the same thing as right-clicking in this gray area. So if I wanted to change the hours on Monday to 9 hours, we should bring my total up to 41 for the week. As we can see, it did not. I can just go up to the Refresh List button up here, and it will refresh the spreadsheet. One key to remember is the week starts on column. You want to make sure you're in the correct week. You can move backward and forward through the weeks by moving to the previous week or the next week button, which will take you to a different column of where the week would start on. At the time we're creating these videos, I don't have any data for the previous or the next week yet. So I can't show you that, but it's easy enough that you'll be able to figure that out fairly easily on your own. Now let's take a few minutes to cover shift differential. That kind of detail won't be seen on this particular spreadsheet view. So I'll go into this at the task level. I'll go into the task by clicking on the date here in the week starts on column for this particular task, this bottom one. Now you can see that we have a lot more detail to work with. So let's go down to say the eight hours we put on Tuesday the 21st. And let's say that I was working a shift where a shift differential would apply. And let's say it's a shift four. I just put that information in there and then hit save. Now that that differential is associated with it, eight hours of time entry on Tuesday, I'll just hit this left caret to go back to the spreadsheet view. Now each time we come back to the spreadsheet view, by default, it will move to the current week's view. So the eight hours I put in, in this case, was last week, so we'll go back to the previous week. Now you'll notice there's nothing new about the view here. We still have the eight hours for Tuesday. We're not actually showing shift differential in this view. If you regularly work shifts, you may want to add shift differentials into your column view. As with other previous training, you can add or delete columns from your view by clicking on this yellow gear here to the left. It will show you on the right hand side the columns that we currently can view. On the left hand side are the columns that we can add into the view. I can add all of the shift differentials for each day of the week, but for instructional purposes I'll just put Tuesdays in place. So I'll look for Tuesday shift differential move it to the right and I'll move it up just past the Tuesday time entry. And I'll click OK. Again I entered it in last week's time so I'll move back to the previous week and now because I've added that column you can see that the eight hours entered on Tuesday was for shift four. And of course you can add the rest of the week's columns in there for the shift columns if you want to. For those regularly working shifts, one of the nice things about adding these columns into the view is if I double click into this area, I can now select it from a pull down right here. Let's take a couple of minutes to cover how to enter on call time. Tasks that you're allowed to put on call time against will be labeled as such, such as this one. The formula for on call time is the same as it was before under change point. For every 12 hours of on call, you can record one hour. So if I was on call for 24 hours, on Tuesday, I would enter two hours on Tuesday. And that's how I would record on call hours. Keep in mind as you enter time, it should be done in no less than 15 minute increments.
on call time would be the exception without being rounded to the nearest quarter hour. Leave it at one hour increments. Also keep in mind that timesheets will be locked by noon on Monday. It can't be altered past that time except by those with administrative permissions. One last idea that you might find useful. You can drag one of the views of your time cards, most likely the current view. You can click and drag it over to the left bookmark column, release, and now you can jump to your time card from any window that you're at within ServiceNow. Then I can go back into the bookmark, edit the bookmark. I can change the image to something relative to time. Even give it a different color. I can move it higher in my bookmarks if I want to. And then it'll be much easier to get to my time cards quickly. That covers the basics of task and time card entry. If you have any questions, please contact the Project Management Office.